For more, we have Edward Hall joining us. He's a lecturer in international relations at the University of Oxford and a career foundation fellow at Chatham House. Thanks so much for joining us this evening, Dr. Hall. Now, in the last few weeks and days, a lot of guessing uh, analysts, experts, uh, policymakers about what North Korea is getting in return from Russia, what Russia is getting in return from North Korea. And we just heard our correspondent there saying it's still unclear. But with the firing of the first ICBM in almost a year, uh, so we see some advance from North Korea technologically, uh, is there any more sign of what North Korea or Russia might be getting in return for this new close relations between the two? Thank you. So we know that over the past year, North Korea has supplied artillery shells, ballistic missiles um, to Russia. And in return, we know it's gained cash and it's gained food assistance. It's the military technology part that is, um, that is the area in which we really don't know the specifics as to just what Russia has been transferring to North Korea. But what we do know is that it is this military technology, advanced missile technology, satellite technology, that Kim Jong-un values the most. So this is why um, this, this has attracted um, a lot of attention from observers. I think what we can say is that North Korea's latest ICBM launch, the first in uh, just um, over just a year, um, does highlight the, uh, the concerning reality that North Korea is increasing the scope and sophistication of its nuclear development and its missile delivery systems. The missile flew for longer um, than uh, the, the, the ICBM test last year, uh, and it was obviously the longest flight time of any North Korean missile launch. This is concerning because it portends in the future that if Russian technology does end up in North Korea's direction, then Kim Jong-un will be able to accelerate the scope and sophistication of his missile capabilities. So the progress that Pyongyang has made as far as the firing of this ICBM suggests, uh, there is no suggestion then that he might not need Russia quite as much, given the advance that North Korea itself has made on its missile development program. I think if you're Kim Jong-un, um, any assistance that Russia can give in terms of advanced technology will be valued. It's quite clear that the reason why when Putin met Kim Jong-un um, in September last year, many observers thought they would meet in Vladivostok, the site of their previous meeting. But no, Putin took him to the Vostokny Cosmodrome. Kim Jong-un admired Russia's advanced technology. And now we're at a stage when actually we must remember it was North Korea that came to Russia's um, rescue uh, early on, a year or so ago, when Putin was in dire need um, of North Korean artillery. That relationship has expanded, it's developed. We saw the signing of the Mutual Defence Pact, um, the Partnership Treaty earlier this year. We've now seen signs of North Korean troops being deployed to assist Putin. So if there's something that Russia can give back to North Korea, it may not be Russia's best military or missile technology, but any technology that does end up in Pyongyang's hands from Russia will be a benefit to Kim Jong-un. All right. Uh, the enormous elephant in the room, which uh, is keeping fairly silent, apart from a regular briefing from its Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that's China, of course. Uh, China, we talk about mutual defence pact between Russia and North Korea. China is North Korea's only formal mutual defense a treaty uh, alliance partner. Uh, China also has a so-called no-limits partnership with Russia. So it's friends with both these two, and these two are now reaching out to each other. Uh, we heard an analyst there in the correspondence package saying China doesn't care now about North Korea. Can China ever afford not to care about either North Korea or Russia? So I think first and foremost, um, China, China has been relatively cautious in what it has said, even when all we knew that North Korea was transferring to Russia was artillery. OK, so you know, in the first year of the Ukraine war um, and even more recently, China has said that it does not know of any reports of North Korean troops being sent to Russia and that actually 
When pressed, the Chinese foreign ministry has said that this is basically um, a relationship between Russia and North Korea. It's their business and China isn't getting involved. I think China is not going to be very happy at North Korea's renewed partnership with Russia, particularly now, and I say now, given the, the sending and the, de the deployment of North Korean troops. Um, I think China has a dilemma. On the one hand, it is clearly wanting to have a say on North Korea's foreign policy and on the Korean Peninsula. China has always wanted um, not to lose influence over North Korea. China signed the Korean War Armistice Agreement in, in 1953. China is North Korea's largest economic partner. Okay, if, we think about, if we think about it up to now, China has been much more important to North Korea than Russia has. But right, that said, I think China is also very dissatisfied at how the West is responding to this. The US is strengthening alliances with South Korea and Japan. Um, the West's response um, to uh, Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. And so China is caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, and I think that, you know, what will it take, the question is, for China to step in and, and, and make clear that it is really unhappy about North Korean troops being sent, being sent to Russia. That said, I think we must also remember that Taiwan is a far more important foreign policy priority for China than North Korea is. China is perfectly happy if the Korean Peninsula remains stable and free from chaos. It doesn't like having a nuclear North Korea on its border. I think that is clear. But it's perfectly happy to help North Korea evade sanctions if that just calms the situation down. And the final point that we must remember is that Russia and China are still engaging in trade, particularly of dual use technologies um, that that has has and continue to assist Putin in the Ukraine war. So essentially, Dr. Hao looking at everyone having his or her own priorities when they calibrate their relations. Dr. Edward Hall, lecturer in international relations, the University of Oxford.